Welcome back to page 121. Today we're going to take a look at module S3, Expedition of the Barrier Peaks. This is the third of these S or special series of modules. This one by Gary Gygax, and it brings us lasers and spaceships in D&D. &D. Uh, pretty neat module from back in 1980. I'm going to go through a little bit of the history of the module itself and where it's located and why this still holds a very near and dear place to my heart, even though it doesn't see the table much anymore. So, Module S3, Expedition to the Barrier Peaks, by Gary Gygax. This module takes place in the Grand Duchy of Jeff, G-E-O-F-F. -F. We used to jokingly call it Geoff, because we had two players in our group named Jeff. Uh, to give you an idea of where it is, I'm going to pull back a little bit. There's Valuna, there's Furiandi, and there's the city of Greyhawk right there. Pretty much everything in my campaign, if I want my players to know where it is when I show them the map... I just show them where Greyhawk is or Furiandi. Furiandi's been home of my campaign for 40 years now. Uh, been a big part of my campaign. So this is the lovely Darlene map. I love this map. But here we are. The Grand Duchy of Jeff. Or Duchy of Jeff, depending on how you say it. And uh, we're going to go into the details of the module from there. Expedition to the Barrier Peaks by Gary Gygax. This is an adventure for characters... Levels 8 to 12. Honestly, I think it's a little tougher than that. This module was originally out for the uh, d and system in 1976 at Origins 2. Uh, this is the updated version that was out in 19... This copy is actually from 1981. Uh, it was released in 80 and then released again in 81. So my copy is... Uh, I remember getting this in... I want to say early 81, but I'm not positive on that. It could have been a little bit later... But I was into D&D about a year by the time I bought this module and had been into Gamma World for a while. Gamma World was first published in 1978. And this uh, module, the original idea in the Origins module, was to kind of get people ready for the coming of uh, Metamorphosis Alpha by Jim Ward. And this module was to get us ready for Gamma World. And uh, it succeeds. Uh, it's ray guns in D&D. This is a very famous module. Uh, Stephen Colbert is quoted as saying it's one of his favorites of all time. Uh, I a lot of good memories out of this one. I ran this originally in uh, before I even started my Greyhawk campaign, which, by the way, I began my Greyhawk campaign 40 years ago this month. In uh, January of 1982, I first went over to the Greyhawk campaign, and I've never really looked back. Uh, love Greyhawk, have been there happy for 40 years. And it's the same contiguous campaign. And there are even uh, my wife, who was one of the players in the campaign at the time, and uh, Craig, one of the players in our group, was also part of that. So I actually still have two of the original members of my group uh, from 1982 who still play in my campaign. So I guess I'm doing something, right? So the module itself is you are contacted by the... Uh, your, it takes place in the Dookie of... Jeff, G-E-O-F-F, -F, big joke for us was Geoff. We used to call it the Dookie of Geoff, G-E-O-F-F, -F, because we had two guys in our group named Jeff. Uh, just a silly little thing you used to do. And there, I'll go back to the cover. There have been mysterious monsters appearing and, and wreaking havoc. And the player characters are, are called together by the Grand Duke. And they are assembled at his castle near Gorna. And... They have to go into the Barrier Peaks and find out where these monsters are coming from and if there's anything that can be done about it. Uh, these are strange alien-type creatures, alien to the area, alien to our planet. Hmm. So the idea is you go into the Barrier Peaks and you find out where these things are coming from. They're coming from a cave, and the cave is actually a doorway to a spaceship that has crash-landed. The... Uh, the original write-up gives you, this is what you're supposed to show when you show the, the doorways. I'm going to go into the illustration book in detail. Love the picture of that mind flare. Very Star Wars looking. The uh, the premise of the game, the game is that the dungeon, quote-unquote, in this one, is a part of a crashed starship. And the starship has crashed, we don't know how many years ago, caused a landslide that buried it. All the people who had been aboard it, who were humanoid, uh, have succumbed to some type of uh, alien pandemic, epidemic, whatever, uh, and they are, are all dead. 
and the artificial intelligences have gone kind of haywire looking for input and things to do. So they decide, hey, let's just go ahead and unbury it. And this was a zoo ship, uh, fortunately. So let's let all the animals out. And that's where we got the, the animals. This module was great for introducing some new monsters to us. Um, new to me, at least, were the Vegapygmies. Pygmies. I don't remember seeing them anywhere before. I know the Intellect Devourer, the Wolf in Sheep's Clothing, the Frog Hemoth, and the Arumvirex are all in this, this module. And they all appear later in... Monster Manual 2. So this is one of the early looks at them, and I love the Frog Hemoth from the start. But we'll get to him in a minute. So basically the dungeon crawl that you're in in this one is uh, you're going through all this alien tech. I'm going to go to the booklet now. Here's the illustration booklet. Uh, this is uh, part of the S series, S3. S stood for special. The idea being that they had a little special handout in this one, which was this excellent book in the middle which has 63 different illustrations in it. This is very much like uh, Module S1, Tomb of Horrors, where you show the player characters each of the pictures. I found that very immersive uh, when I DM'd. My players, I know, found it very immersive. It was nice to just show them. Here, this is what it looks like. And this one's even got a, a little uh, trick or two in there on the in the folio that I'm going to show you in a minute. Not a trick, but a special thing. I'm going to move this out of the way. We're going to look at the folio for a little bit. So as you go through the game, at the adventure, everything is marked, and it's keyed to these illustrations. So when you get to area one, show illustration number one, number two, and then that's how you keep going. So, And then you have to turn them different ways. There's three. That's the outer look as you approach the area where the spaceship is buried. There's some veggie pygmies in an elevator, which is just cool. And then different robots. Monsters love this early 80s artwork. A lot of it's Errol Otis. There are a few others. I'll, I'll read the credits for the end. Some Shriekers with some Veggie Pygmies. An android. Another android. I always thought these androids looked a lot like recorders from Marvel Comics. And if anybody's familiar with the old Thors or the Hercules series in the early 80s, you know who the recorder is. Maybe sometime we'll do a video on that. So, <clears throat> lots of different things. There's a nice picture of the spaceship quarter. Now, this was not a very D&D flavored adventure, but that was the idea. Uh, Gygax and his co-DMs in the original campaign often mixed uh, mechanics into it. Even Tolkien, uh, you know, Sauron was, or Saruman rather, was going out to a mind of metal and was getting more interested in technology than he was in the growing things of the world. So Gygax, I always felt kind of embraced that. So we do get some technology in some of his stuff, Although I love his rule that gunpowder doesn't work in Greyhawk, and I've embraced that mightily. So here we go, some more pictures. We've got some of the uh, people who've succumbed to the plague depicted in some of these. There we go, some more. This is a floor. I'm going to go through each section of the ship in just a moment. But I thought it'd be kind of neat to show the illustration book. I love this. I've used this picture off and on for Traveler for years. I especially love the Star Trek Swivel chairs, which are just so practical aboard a starship. you got a giant slug. You've got, uh, I think that's an android. There's some battle armor here, armor in here as well. And then we come down to the parts that I really like. These are in full color. We've got four of these. <clears throat> Number 31. And each of these is keyed to sections in the book. I'm not going to go into every detail of what's what. This, however, was the first time I saw a frog hemoth. I absolutely love the frog hemoth. It's one of my favorite monsters, and he's been in many, many of my games. Uh, if you saw my How to Paint videos, you saw that I painted one of those. And there's the Arumvirex, another one of my favorites. I just felt he was based on the character Wolverine from Marvel Comics. And then we keep going through the book. I'm not going to keep twisting and turning this. I just want you to see that there were some beautiful photo, or, uh, illustrations in here. This is the wolf's and sheep, wolf in sheep's clothing, which is an interesting monster. It's sort of a mimic in that you've got the little bunny sitting on the stump. and everything. Oh, so cute. And then, ah, big mouth and tentacles come up and you get eaten and the little bunny just sits there. It's just a stuffed animal and a, a lure. Anglerfish, if you will. And uh, here we have some more of these stuff. This one I always found 
really thought provoking. Here are the player characters on the command deck. All right, actually, I think this is the recreation area, but they're looking at the screens. And I just thought it was really strange to see the player characters in the science fiction setting. I loved this book when I ran it. Everybody had a blast with it. Here's some androids you can end up fighting. It's a fencing master, a karate master, uh, a workout bot, and you end up fighting them. And then there's a belay falling on its face out of the uh, starship. And then we got some nice tech pictures. And this section right back here, these illustrations, are why one of the reasons why this rode around in my Gamma World box for years. These were some of the best illustrations we'd had of space tech from TSR. So I incorporated a lot of this into my Gamma World game. And in fact, as we go through the module itself, I'm going to show you, I actually ran part of this as a Gamma World adventure rather than a D&D adventure. So, coming back to the module itself. <clears throat> some interesting ideas in this one. For one thing, the starship is huge. And if you're familiar at all with uh, the Gygax era Gamma World, what you had to do was go around and get different identi cards. And they, these were little swipe cards that we would call them now. And <clears throat> they would let you into different sections of the ship. Well, in this adventure, you're introduced to that very standard Gamma World concept where you have to find the key cards to get into certain areas to the point that if you look, let me try to get a good shot of it, all the little letters over the ships, this tells us what color we need to get through the uh, door. So the J's that you see brought out there, that is for the jet black swipe card. J is for jet black. So all of these show the different swipe card you would need. So the player characters walk around with getting these different swipe cards and then have to keep trying them in different doors. <clears throat> That's fun for a bit, but I even found in Gamma World that that got old. Uh, and in this adventure, there are, I think, seven different swipe cards. Brown, gray, red, violet, orange, yellow, and jet black. That's a lot of combos to try. My players got bored with that fairly quickly. I... Kind of hand-waved it after the first little yuck-yuck at them, and uh, we we didn't do too much with it after that. Not a criticism of the module, it's just that something that we didn't find engaging. I'm going to show continue to show the gatefold. These are all the levels. Level 1 that we have uh, called out here is for the, this is the officer's quarters, technician quarters. Level 2 has a service deck. This is where a lot of the service stuff would be. Level 3 is an upper walkway, and it's the lounge area. Level 4 is the botanical garden. This is where a lot of the creepy crawlies are. Uh, this is the botanical garden, rookery, and menagerie. So this is where the, the, the zoo part of the zoo ship came from. So again, like Metamorphosis Alpha, lots of strange beasties on board that get loose. Level 5 is another service deck. Level 6 gives us the theater, athletic, and activity deck. This is where we meet the boxing android, the karate android. And then there's the back. So we're going to continue going through the module itself. And again, everything is keyed to the illustration book and how it's lit. And the neat thing about this was if you wanted your player characters walking around with blaster guns, this was your, your book. And Star Wars was still very, very big. The second movie had just come out in May of 80. So anything with a Star Wars flavor did pretty well. And I had a lot of player characters really take to this module. I ran it, I think I ran it twice. I ran it in two six-hour sessions. And each time it was well accepted, but we covered less than half the spaceship. So what we did to, or what I did to rectify that is a little bit later while we were playing Gamma World, I didn't say anything to anybody. I just took that spaceship and made it a Gamma World crawl. So I use this module both for AD&D and for Gamma World. So this is a, it's just a nice module. It's a cool idea. I'm not massively into mixing technology and science. Uh, I understand people that are, and I get it. I do have a special place in my heart for this module, although I have to admit I have not run it in years, nor do I really plan to run it with my current group. Uh, for one thing, <clears throat> some of the older players have been through it, either through me or through other DMs. And for another, I don't mix technology in my campaign anymore. But when we were younger and new to it, 
and especially getting into Gamma World, boy, was this thing sweet. I do love the artwork in this thing. I have to admit, prior to uh, prepping for this video, I hadn't opened this book in at least 10 years. And rereading it and going through everything and remembering everything in it, it brought back a ton of fond memories. We had a blast in some of these places. Speaking of blast, blasters. One problem I found with D&D early is we had a DM who gave out handguns. Handguns in D&D are just like in real life. They're kind of a great equalizer. An unskilled individual can wreak some havoc. I never liked guns in my D&D game. They've never been part of my Greyhawk universe. But pre-Greyhawk, there were some guns around from other DMs. And I had given out a couple blasters in this. <clears throat> the thing to do with both of those is limit their uh, ammunition and the ability to be repaired. In this case, I gave the players pretty much one adventure after this where they had enough shots last on their blasters and, and some of the force field belts and things they found where they could wander around the D&D universe I was running at the time. It was pre-Greyhawk. It was a universe I had made. Uh, never even really named. I've got the map around here somewhere. I should pull that out sometime and show you. Uh, a friend of mine, one of my players, drew the map. And uh, they ran around in my game with that, but I usually only would let them have the blasters for about one game. And then they would be sold off to collectors as non suches Coming back to this module, I want to show this. These are the flow charts. Anybody familiar with the original Gamma World, you're used to these flow charts. What a pain these were. You want to slam gameplay to a halt. These are used to try to figure out the technology. Since the player characters are not used to this technology, they have to trial and error it. These charts walk you through it with die rolls. If you roll this, you go here. If you roll this, you go here. All the way through. You want to slam your game to a halt. Trot one of these out. I tried it in early Gamma World. It, they, they're fine, but they really don't work. What I used to do as a DM is I would sit with this chart before the game and I would flow through it, and then we would role-play how they did based on what I rolled on this chart. So I did use these charts, but I used them off-screen, if you will, and I didn't slow my players down with it. I did it as part of my dungeon prep. So that's a good way to use these charts, and I do recommend it. And now we come to the weapons data. This, again, is one of the reasons why this rode around in my Gamma World box for years. This was better detail and better illustrations for weapons than we had in Gamma World to this point. So this was very useful for that. You got some miscellaneous devices. I even threw a couple of these into my early Traveler game and my Star Frontiers. This stuff is just very sweet. I just, I like some of the ideas in here. And here's all the androids and robots, all their armor class, uh, combat stats, uh, russet mold. And here we have a nice cutaway view of the ship. And then this was kind of amazing to me, since this was a competition module. This is all we get for the player character roster of ones you could use, pre-generated pre characters we could use. Uh, I was pretty amazed that we got 15 characters slammed together on one page, and that was it. But this book was not about what player character you're going to take into it. This book was about the adventure itself. And there's a nice little house ad for everything you can buy for D&D. So Expedition to the Barrier Peaks, Module S3, a third of the special series. I love this module. It's It has so much nostalgia for me and so much, gosh, wow, before you know, we, we became serious role players, we ran around with blasters shooting things. It was a lot of fun to, for me to DM. I've actually never played in this. I've only ever DM'd it. Uh, but it was a lot of fun to DM back in the day. Again, I don't know that it's one I would go back to now with my players simply because I have experienced players who've been through this and uh, we're all kind of uh, magic purists in our D&D game. We're not looking to incorporate a lot of technology, but that's just how we slant. So um, I recommend it highly. It is available on DriveThruRPG. I want to say it's $5. There is no print on demand that I can find, uh, which is a shame, but the illustration book especially should be a POD. Uh, would be really nice to, to get like that. But I do recommend this highly. And if you uh, you can buy it on eBay also. It's not horribly expensive. I want to say about 30 bucks uh, on some of the copies. But be careful. you got to be sure that they're complete. There are uh, two gatefold interiors here. One, two, showing the starship. And then, of course, the main book. And then the illustration booklet. So 
there are quite a few parts to this. So if you do go the eBay route, be sure you get a complete part or a complete uh, module. Well, that's it for today on page 121. I hope you liked it. Uh, I enjoyed going down memory lane on my expedition to the barrier peaks. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe and leave some comments below. And I'll see you next time on page 121.